I'll start off by showing you how to make a savory pie crust and then use that in a leek and gruyere quiche. I'm going to measure four cups of flour and it's important that you use cake and pastry flour. It's milled more finely, so it's a little more delicate, it's got less protein, and that ensures a tender crust. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Now for the butter. I need a cup plus two tablespoons, so that equals nine ounces of butter. So I'm going to weigh it and spoon it into my mixing bowl. Now compared to a typical pie dough, I'm using room temperature butter. The room temperature butter is a French technique. It's typical to savory pie dough and it's a real time saver. So I'll use my paddle attachment and it doesn't take long because of course the butter is soft and it's going to be in a sandy texture by the time the butter's worked in. This won't take too long. So now it's time to add the liquids, which is a combination of two whole eggs and half a cup of cool water. I'll just lightly whisk the eggs. And I'll add this all at once to the mixture and the dough will actually look like it's broken into pieces. That only took a second to mix. And look at this mess. That's actually what I want. There's still dry pieces of flour. This is the point where I wanna set the butter and chill it. And you do wanna give it about two hours to make sure that butter is fully set because the next step is where you build in that flakiness that you expect out of a nicely made pie dough. I have one here that's already had the two hours to sit and chill. I'll lightly flour my work surface and use my hands to bring together the dough. It's this stage that you are then flattening out the butter so that when this pie crust bakes, butter melts, and that's how you get the flakiness into a pie crust. Now, I'll divide this in half. Look at that flakiness. Oh, I just get so excited about little things like that. I've rolled out the dough into a circle that's about a quarter inch thick. And to make a traditional quiche, I'm using a nine inch removable bottom tart pan. There's no need to grease the pan, just a little dusting of flour. And then see how easily this rolled without cracking? It lifts easily, so you can line your tart tin and then to get it pressed into the sides, you wanna lift it and gently push it into the corners. And then to trim the edges, I simply use my rolling pin. Now before you can bake off your quiche, you actually want to let your pie crust chill for a little bit. About half an hour sets the butter, relaxes the proteins in the flour so you know it'll bake up tender and very importantly, hold its shape when it's baked. I have one that's already had a chance to chill, and now it's time to blind bake it. Blind baking fully cooks your tart shell before you put in a wet filling, so that way it doesn't absorb and become soggy. To get your pie crust ready for baking, first you wanna dock it. Just take a fork and pierce a few holes in it. And then to blind bake, you need to line your pie crust with foil. And then it's up to you, you can use pie weights, I like to use dried beans as the weight. So this replicates the filling that would be holding the pie crust down. Make sure you push that right to the edges of the pastry crust. And now this is ready for the oven. It's a really hot oven, 400 degrees. And I'll bake it first for 10 minutes with the foil and the beans in place. Then I'll remove both to bake another 10 minutes. While that's baking, that leaves me the perfect amount of time to start on the filling. I have a cup of leeks, which I finely diced and washed. I've got a saute pan, add just a little bit of butter, let that melt, and then add the leeks. As you're cooking your leeks, you only have to stir them occasionally. 
Now it's time for me to pull the foil and the beans off of that tart shell. This goes back in the oven for another 10 minutes, and that's to set the bottom. Now I have a crust that's already baked and cooled. It's important when you're making a quiche that your pre-baked crust is cooled before you fill it. That way it won't absorb that beautiful eggy liquid. I'll get my fillings ready. And now for the grated cheese, as well as the cream. So even the cheese goes in before I pour the custard over top. I want a nice rich quiche with a beautiful set so I can slice it cleanly. So that calls for four eggs. And I'll lightly whisk these first. And then measure in one and two thirds cups of whipping cream. I only need to add a pinch of salt, and a pinch of black pepper, and I do like to add a pinch of nutmeg. I pour it in slowly, letting the custard seep in and around the cheese and the leeks, and it may take a second or two for it to settle into place. The quiche is ready for baking, this time in a 350 oven. And it does take a while, 40 to 45 minutes for it to set, but oh, it's gonna brown beautifully. I pulled this beautiful quiche out of the oven about 15 minutes ago. And it's important, it smells so good when it's baking, but you do wanna let it cool for about 15 minutes. It's just too delicate and fragile right out of the oven. But I can take it out of the tin and put it on display. And then slide it onto your serving plate. And now it's cooled enough to serve. I love how that blending of eggs and whipping cream gives you that perfect quiche consistency 